Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Uh, today I will talk about pharmaceutical emulsion, uh, which is a dosage form. And the brief outline of my talk would be uh, I'll first talk about the introduction, the type of pharmaceutical emulsion, uh, the advantages, the stability aspects, and the pharmace pharmaceutical considerations. So after this lecture, the students would be able to understand the basic concept of this dosage form and the different factors which need to be considered while design, designing a formulation for emulsion. So uh, emulsion is a dispersed system and uh, a dispersed system is a one which uh, has two or more phases. And in emulsion, we have two phases, that is water and oil phases. So one phase is dispersed in the other one. So the one which is dispersed is called dispersion, dispersed phase, and uh, the continuous phase is called dispersion medium. The dispersed phase is actually us, uh, in the form of uh, droplets. So we can have either water in oil or water or oil in water emulsion. There can be conditions where we have multiple emulsions in which uh, one droplet is dispersed in the other one, and then that is, as a whole droplet is dispersed in the dispersion medium. Uh, one such example is this given in this picture where we have one droplet in the other droplet and this whole droplet is then dispersed, uh, dispersed in the dispersion medium. So we call these multiple emulsions. Um, emulsions are advantageous in conditions where uh, the drug has low eco-solubility. Um, ideally, the drug should be dissolved in water and the easiest uh, dosage form is the syrups, which, in which we dissolve the drug in water and then uh, by adding sweetener and different uh, components to the formulation, we can administer it as a uh, syrup, but there are conditions where the drug is only soluble in non-polar liquids like uh, oil. Uh, in the, in those conditions, the drug needs to be dissolved in these oils, and then these oils should be dispersed as droplets in the continuous phases. Um, since it has a lot of oils, therefore it ha it gives us better absorption because most of the cell membranes are. Uh, phospho, it, uh, the major portion is phospholipids. So the, 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 the drugs which if dissolved in oil, it will have better absorption uh, and therefore uh, the bioavailability will be enhanced. Uh, it can also be used in taste masking because most of the drugs have bitter tastes and when, it, when they are dissolved in some suitable non-polar liquids, um, it can be dispersed in a sweet dispersion medium and by using uh, this we can taste mask uh, the drug. Uh, there are some oils which have some therapeutic effect. Uh, for example, liquid paraffin has a slight irritating e uh, effect on the intestine. Uh, by, by that mechanism, it slightly uh, increases the gut motility and therefore it can be used as a uh, Lexative. One such example is Gramafin by Abbott Laboratories, uh, which is available in Pakistan. Um, there are also conditions where when we apply a solid drug in the form of a paste or um, an ointment, it can, uh, uh, it can have irritancy on the, on the skin. So if it, is, if it is applied as oil in water emulsion, the irritancy of the drug is reduced. It can be useful in those conditions as well. Uh, since it is a liquid dosage form, therefore it is useful in conditions uh, where the patient is unable to swallow solid dosage forms like tablets or liquids. For example, children, uh, they are unable to uh, swallow tablets. Therefore, it can be uh, emulsion can be useful in those conditions. Mm. Um, there is also uh, the use of emulsions in TPN. Uh, TPN is a total parental nutrition. It is actually an infusion usually given to the patients where, where the patient is unable to, to, to get food by, by mouth. Uh, so in those conditions, there is a 
uh, requirement of feeds, carbohydrates, and the proteins which are uh, given is infusion. So in those conditions, the feeds are dispersed as droplets, and this is called emulsion. Uh, so emulsions are thermodynamically unstable. Uh, is evident from this equation that Gibbs free energy is directly proportional to the uh, interfacial tension between the two phases and the change in the surface area. So the higher the surface uh, tension, the higher the interfacial tension between the two phases, the higher will be the free energy and uh, the tendency of instability. And uh, the smaller the droplets, the higher will be the surface area and uh, the higher will be the Gibbs free energy and therefore the emulsion would be unstable. So there are different terminologies used uh, for instability of emulsion. Uh, if the two phases are completely separated into uh, two distinct phases, we call phase separation, and they are actually two different layers. Um, there is also a condition where there is a partial breaking of the emulsion, that is some of the droplets um, uh, try to coalesce together. So we call it coalescence. Coalescence is actually um, adherence or cohesion of the two uh, droplets with each other forming a big droplet. So two small droplets combine together to form a big droplet, which is called coalescence. And coalescence can lead to creaming. Creaming is actually accumulation of some of the fates of the emulsion on the surface of the emulsion. And uh, you might have observed uh, a cream on the milk. So milk is actually a natural emulsion in which we have a large amount of fates. So when we heat it, actually the heating uh, is, uh, slightly uh, destabilizes the emulsion and some of the fates coalesce together and form a cream on the surface of the milk. Uh, there is condition uh, called flocculation where some of the small droplets come close to each other but they do not uh, combine to form small uh, a big droplet they actually are loose aggregates so by shaking these droplets can be dispersed and this is called flocculation so flocculation and polysins are different in polysins two small droplets combine together to form one big droplet but in flocculation, these uh, droplets come close to each other loosely, and by shaking, these droplets can be uh, redispersed, and it is slightly uh, stable form of uh, emulsion. Um, so, by by uh, since as I mentioned that emulsions are thermodynamically unstable, uh, therefore there are some components needed to stabilize it and uh, uh, we call it emulsifying agent. The emulsifying agent is actually uh, an agent which comes at the interface of the two phases and it reduces the interfacial tension between the two immiscible phases and by, by doing so uh, it stabilizes the emulsion. There are various theories uh, about how the emulsifier stabilizes emulsion and uh, the student uh, might have studied it in the second year. Uh, different, uh, you know, surface tension theory, oriented wedge theory, interfacial film theory, and electrostatic repulsion theory. There are different theories behind how emulsion uh, is stabilized by emulsifying agents, which you can uh, recall. So, the different formula factors which needs to be considered uh, since uh, emulsion is a very uh, unstable system therefore there are many factors which need to be considered uh, the the first one is type of emulsion the type of emulsion is important for uh, uh, for uh, the type of application for example uh, oral or intravenous uh, administration requires oil in water emulsion because oil in water emulsion has no uh, um, viscosity usually so for oral and intravenous administration we usually uh, design the formulation into uh, oil in water emulsion but for creams uh, we can have um, water in oil because if we increase the amount of oil in the emulsion 
the viscosity of the oil will be of the emulsion will be enhanced and it it, it is not then uh, suitable for intravenous administration um, Another important thing is that oil in water emulsion, since the external phase is water, therefore uh, it is non-greasy. So the cream, which is oil in water uh, emulsion, they can be easily washed from the surface because the dispersion medium is actually water phase. Uh, the water in oil emulsion is greasy because the, the external medium is oil. So it, the washing of the water in oil uh, cream would be a bit difficult. So the, the volume of internal phase is also important because uh, in water in, in oil and water emulsions the ratio of internal to external uh, phases can be 50% uh, that is one ratio one but uh, for oil in uh, for water in oil emulsion the internal but for uh, water in oil emulsion the internal phase uh, should be around 30 to 40 percent that is the external phase would be a little higher amount uh, compared to the internal phase for for proper stability of the emulsion the droplet size is also important because uh, droplet size increases if we increase the droplet size the surface area of the droplet increases and if we increase the surface area the dips free energy increases as i mentioned in the previous slide and it will be uh, uh, lead to it, it will lead to instability of the uh, emulsion. Viscosity of the internal and external phases are also important because uh, if the viscosity is too high, then it may have difficulty in administration. For example, for uh, oral and intravenous application, we cannot administer a very viscous emulsion. For creams and uh, uh, for creams and topical formulations, we can have a little higher viscosity of the formulation, but for oral uh, applications uh, and intravenous applications, the viscosity needs to be at the lower end. Another important thing is the choice and concentration of emulsifying agent. So uh, the emulsifying agent is actually responsible for stability of emulsion. So um, the solubility characteristic of emulsifying agent is really important. Um, the emulsifying agent uh, usually contain two parts: the hydrophilic part and hydro uh, lipophilic, uh, lipophilic and hydrophilic part. So, if the hydrophilic part is in excess, that is, the major part is hydrophilic, the emulsifying agent is hydrophilic in nature, and it can be used for uh, oil and water emulsion. But if the major portion of the hydro the emulsifying agent is lipophilic, then it is only suitable for water in oil emulsion so this uh, combination of hydrophilicity and lipophilicity is actually uh, termed as hydrophil uh, hydrophile lipophile balance and uh, hlb value usually we call it by hlb value so all the emulsifiers have their hlb value that is hydrophile lipophile balance depending on the ratio of hydrophilic and lipophilic parts the, it has different numbers. So just to conclude, uh, today we have talked about uh, pharmaceutical emulsion briefly, and these are two phase systems in which we have oil and water phases. Uh, either of these um, uh, system, uh, these phases can be dispersed as small droplets in the other one, and uh, these are thermodynamically unstable. These small droplets can come together uh, to form big droplets. Uh, therefore, a third component is needed, which we call emulsifying agents. And these emulsifying agents, by reducing the interfacial tension between these two phases, can stabilize the um, emulsion. And the, 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 the accumulation of emulsifying agent on the interface depends on the solubility of the emulsifying agents. If the emulsifying agent has a major portion is hydrophilic, then it is suitable for oil in water emulsion. But if it has a higher portion of lipophilic part, then it is called, uh, then it is suitable for water in oil emulsion. And this hydrophilic lipophilic uh, ratio is usually explained in terms of HLB value, which we call hydrophile lipophile balance. So this was just brief outline of the 
uh, brief uh, introduction to the pharmaceutical emulsion. Uh, in the next lecture, I will talk about the different equipments used and the technology uh, behind it and the different issues which come during manufacturing. Thank you very much.